Good morning, everybody. The girls are out here with me. I am Sarah. I am the Real Simple Mama, and I'm going to do a quick, fun, cute video about the trees that I have planted in my chicken run. Good morning, everybody. So first of all, I get asked questions on the regular about the plants that I have put in here. So just super fast, I'm gonna do a 30 second rundown of a little bit just in general about the plants. So we've been living in this home just a little over two years. I am in San Antonio, which if you are in the United States, you can look at what USDA zone you are in. They divide up based on climate, temperature, all that good stuff. So I am in zone eight. And so I've spent the last two years putting different plants around here that are appropriate for our neck of the woods. So these are drought hardy plants. They don't need a lot of babying. They're all perennials, so they're gonna live for years. And I've planted them in a way so that if we ever move away, it will make a nice cute little seating area. But I have a few trees that are in here. I get asked about them on the regular, and this is how I've made them work for my chickens, how they work with our climate. We're all out here digging and it's so exciting. So I have three trees that I wanna showcase real quick and then I'll show you a couple more little ones um, if I was going to plant more what I would do. The first one is what you're looking at right now, ah, covered in blooms. This is my magnolia tree. Magnolias are my favorite. I love them, love them, love them. And again, like I, I needed them to work for Texas. I don't wanna buy anything or plant anything that's just gonna die. So as you see, this is a little, kind of more of a compact magnolia. This is called a little gem magnolia. Now magnolias can handle heat to an extent, um, but certainly not you know, to the extent that we have here in Texas. So the little gem is better suited for hotter temperatures. Um, and what they will do is they will grow a lot more slowly. They will grow a lot more compact. So they're not gonna be as huge. It'll take him years and years and years to get to the size that you would see on some of those Georgia magnolias. But they do really well being deep watered. I will show you in a minute. I have a soaker hose that I have made for my trees. I deep water them in the, the warmer months. I deep water them about once every three weeks, once a month. Oh, we have new sand in the dust bath. And so what that will do is help the roots go down deep. On any of your trees, you don't want a whole bunch of roots sitting here in the surface sitting here close to the surface. I mean, number one, if you've got chickens, because they're going to dig it up, right? They're going to tear up roots and be looking for bugs and things like that. But especially for extreme temperatures, so we're talking about the coldest winters or the hottest summers, your tree's temperature will stay a lot more stable if you're able to have the roots grow down deep. And you do that by doing deep watering a lot more rarely than shallow watering all the time. If you do a lot of shallow watering, then the roots are going to stay up towards the surface and we don't want that. So this is my little gem magnolia. I've had this tree probably three or four years. It was in a pot for a few years until we came here and I decided to put it in the ground. So I don't do anything supplemental for any of my trees other than, like I said, I use my little ring and I deep water them about once a month. And then if I have um, some coffee or a little bit of fertilizer that I wanna throw on them, I do that. But other than that, they do not get babied at all because I honestly, I don't have time. So that's tree number one, the little gem magnolia. The chickens, obviously they can't reach anything. They don't mess with any of the blooms or the leaves once they fall on the ground. No danger to the chickens. Um, hopefully we will start getting a little bit of shade from this guy pretty soon. The next tree coming over is the glorious one that's here front and center when you come in my chicken run. This is a red bud and this is a type of red bud. Red buds are really awesome in the Texas area and you can see I'm going to nerd out on my plants for a minute. Red buds are really awesome because I, I like them here in the Texas area because it's been winter, everything looks dead, there's no color, it's just depressing. And in the spring, when our freezes are done, there are two types of trees here in the Texas area around zone eight that will bloom first, really early in the spring, we're talking like in March, which for us is quite early. Texas freezes are usually in February. The red bud is one of the ones that will bloom really early. They have beautiful purple pink blooms. They smell like fruit juice. They smell like Kool-Aid. And then most of the red buds that you'll see around the South Texas area, their leaves are hearts. Big, beautiful, smooth leaves. This type of red bud, and I, of course the name escapes me, but this type of red bud, her branches will actually drape and grow almost down to the ground. So she's actually creating like a small little canopy, almost like a little living tent here. The, her shade is great. She's been growing like crazy. She has only been in the ground a year um, and she's already grown this month. 
this much. Now, because I have bird netting, let's stop. Because I have bird netting, which is this black nylon that I'm showing you, I'm not planting any big, huge shade trees in this area. Um, I'm planting trees that are smaller, ornamental trees. They're beautiful, but they are going to provide some shade and some other benefits. So this one, of course, is already providing shade, probably about, oh, I don't know, probably two or three square foot or two or three foot diameter down here on the ground already. She's never going to be a huge tree. She won't be taller than six or seven feet, but it's a beautiful tree. It's an interesting tree, right girlies? It's an interesting tree and it's providing some benefit. Remember, if you're trying to put little trees in with your chickens, it is going to take a while for the roots to get established. When you plant these little trees, like I said, a lot of times you do have to wait for a while before you're going to benefit from the shade, but immediately you can start noticing a, temp a difference in temperature by a couple of degrees. There's going to be more bugs. It's going to almost just like, I, I don't know, it, it's like you create a whole little ecosystem now instead of your chickens just being on dirt. So the last tree, the third tree who's kind of hiding over here is a Vitex lilac. You can see she's starting to bloom right there. This tree will get taller than the other two that I have. She can get I don't know, I'd say probably eight or 12 feet. Again, I'm in zone eight in the United States. This is a lilac tree. And she is gonna be another tree that can get really bushy, that can get thick, um, but she's not gonna be super tall, not gonna be a big shade tree. I am in the process gradually of pruning her up so she grows more like a tree than just a bush. But you can see how wide her branches are and how the foliage is kind of thick over here. It's made a great shady hiding spot. This whole area back here is always shaded. The misters are going right here. You can see my mister review video here if you want to see the misters we set up for 2022 and how well they're working. Um, but this is the third tree that we've got. It is called a Vitex Lilac. It has beautiful stacking blooms that look like that. It's a great tree. I, I love blooming trees or funny trees or trees that have unique properties. So I like trees that flower because it's just more help for those pollinators. Right, Gurneys? Tick, 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 ticks. So these are the three trees that we have. Um, I will say real quickly, I have a couple of bushes or shrubs that are larger that also help with, with shade. These guys right here, this is a type of sage. It's called a Silverado sage because they do have like a little bit of a silver hue on the leaves. They love to put out all of these little blooms after we get a rain. So this is a Silverado sage. In two years, this thing has grown to five feet tall. And I have another one back over there by the Vitex Lilac. So these are really hardy shrubs. If you're in an area where you're like, man, I can't baby these plants. I cannot go out and water them every single day. Um, so just something to keep in mind, these sages. A lot of sage and salvia variants are really good for chickens because they can take the beating of somebody's just pecking them and being annoying. Um, they offer shade, but as you can see, this is another type. This is a salvia, that bushy thing right there with the small pink blooms. It has a funny hole in it because I used to have a chicken who would go in there and just kind of like stand in the middle of it. But other than that, there are not any, um, you know, there's not any issue with the chickens trying to eat it or anything like that. The gold blooming in the back there, that is a threllus, which is a great plant because, again, the chickens don't really eat it. Hi, chick, chick. Chick, 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 chick. You're in my chair. Chick, 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 chick. That is a different type of salvia called a mystic spires. That is the best pollinator plant that I have on my property. I have, and I probably have five of those now. There's another one of those Silverado sages that I was telling you about. I know there's a plane, so I'll finish quickly. The other things I wanted to show you real quick, a couple of other small ornamental trees that would be great in a chicken run. This monster here who has come back bigger and more beautiful and more prominent after every freeze. That is a fig tree. This is an LSU fig. And remember, different trees and bushes, they have different variants depending on, um, you know, what they were bred for. Uh, this is another going to be drought tolerant, heat tolerant fig tree, but she is gigantic. That would have been another amazing thing to plant here in the chicken run. And then the other tree that I like, I have a couple of citrus trees and I have a pomegranate tree, but the other one that I love is an olive tree. So none of them, like I said, are going to be big, huge, fat shade trees. Um, they're not going to grow like, you know, like this guy or like the ash trees that I had that that fell. But if you've got a little zone and you're thinking about, you know, I want shade for my chickens, but again, I've got bird netting because the most important thing to me is that I keep predator birds out like owls, hawks, falcons. Um, I want to keep wild birds out because I don't want disease and nastiness in here. Right, girls? Um, but I did want something to bring, you know, height to the, just your sight line, um, as well as to bring some shade, to bring some more bugs, just some interesting textures and colors. So the three that I've got, again, I have a little gem magnolia that's over here. 
tick, 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 tick. The little gem magnolia. And then if I pan back over this way one more time, this is my red bud, my lilac, who's just going crazy back there. And then the other ones that I like, I showed you my big bushes. And then we had the fig and the olive and a couple of other just awesome plants. So remember lastly that I have a chickens in your garden playlist here. Um, and I do have some content on realsimplemama.com that talks about the plants that I have in with my chickens. So we're talking about plants and chickens at the same time, how I plant them, how I choose um, some plants to avoid that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that content, check it out, but let me know in the comments, what kind of landscaping or plants have you put in with your chickens? What kind of setup are you looking to do? And if you've got any questions, thanks.